So right now, Miguel O'Hara, or better known as Spider-Man 2099, is currently taken over by a symbiote and teaming up with the 2099's version of Venom. So you can say he's not really in the best state of mind right now. And so because of this, Doctor Doom gets hired to put him in his place. Now my name is AJ here at the Hero Informer, and let's get into it. So funnily enough, we move over and see Spider-Man 2099 with Venom in an elevator. Together. As you know, Spider Man and Venom are usually enemies, but this time they seem to be working together, albeit the relationship is very rocky. As you see, not only do they both have symbiotes, but they are even half brothers. Cron Stone, or Venom here, and Miguel O'Hara, who is Spider Man 2099 having the same father, making them half siblings. And so because of this, Venom convinces Spider-Man to team up, albeit for a little bit. And how did this even happen? Well, in the future year of 2099, the Venom symbiote had another spawn, creating another offspring, like a Venom Carnage situation. But because of this, it was captured and experimented on. And after getting freed, it bonded itself to Spider-Man 2099, giving us this sick design that we have now, with symbiote Spider-Man 2099. But as they get out of the Alchemex elevator, they are then stopped by a bunch of guards, telling him to freeze. And you know, Venom's first instinct is to literally kill them because he has no regard or isn't a hero. Spider-Man then says, no, you promise me no one dies unless I say so. And in this case, Venom actually listens because he wants them to stick together and team up instead of fighting and having symbiote on symbiote violence. But with that, Venom then launches off thinking to himself, what a coward. I would dispose of him myself at the first opportunity, but that would be such a waste of potential power. Because previously, Venom and Spider-Man have already fought with Spider-Man even getting the upper hand, with his already amazing powers, plus this new symbiote, it was already looking like they would be an even match. So Venom doesn't just want to throw this all away and wants to explore this new partnership and power. But moving back over, as he then changes his sharp, venomized tendril to just a normal fist, punching one of the guards in the face. And as he continues to wreck more, suddenly one of the guards pick up a sonic weapon. As you know, the symbiote's giant weakness or high-pitched sounds and heat. And because Spider-Man 2099 is now wearing a symbiote too, this is affecting him as well. And this time, the symbiote that Miguel is wearing talks back to him pretty frequently like a normal voice in his head as he says Miguel it hurts cut loose end them it's the only way but again spider-man doesn't want to just kill these random guards even though the symbiote in his head is egging him onto so through willpower he then subdues a symbiote and launching tendrils just incapacitating the guards and turning off the sonics so now as these two symbiote brothers regroup they then head off and leave the Alchemex Tower, busting out of the window with Venom saying, we're free now. Enjoy it, man. There's nothing that can stop us. This entire city is ours for the taking. We can have whatever we want. So what's the first thing you want to do? As they land on a nearby rooftop. But Miguel is unsure as he simply says, I don't know. As he then goes on to tell Venom, I just want to be left alone. And with this, for whatever reason, angering him, saying that's it, as he gets progressively angrier. Because Venom at this point doesn't want to just do nothing. He wants to indulge in killing and doing evil. And thinking Miguel was on the same page, seeing as they're both symbiotes and even half brothers, they start to butt heads a little bit. With Spider-Man 2099 telling him to calm down. But Venom then does the opposite, getting in his face, saying maybe I don't feel like calming down. But just then, Spider-Man does something interesting to say the least. He spits something green in his face kind of like acid, making Venom scream in pain as it literally burns the symbiote from his face. As you see, Miguel in this new symbiote that he's wearing has the ability to literally spit Venom. And this is because it is the spawn or child, if you will, of the actual Venom symbiote, in which that Venom has the same kind of acid-like ability, with even its spit or saliva being acidic too. It could also shapeshift as normal with even turning into some watery substance but that's another topic. But before anything else can happen, we see somebody else now enter the fold. As they both look up and see a woman floating down, it is none other than the Sorcerer Supreme of this time, of the year 2099, who just goes by Strange. And of course, Spider-Man and this new Sorcerer Supreme know each other. Well, they did before Spider-Man got taken over by a symbiote, with this new Sorcerer Supreme even saying as much. Saying, you're not fine, Spider-Man. That much is clear. But come to my sanctum, I can heal you there. As she isn't here physically, she's using astral projection. So this form is basically nothing more than a ghost. But Spider-Man says, I don't need your help. I'm fine, so on your way. With Venom even agreeing with him, saying, you heard him, sweetheart, on your way. But still, she decides to stand her ground. I don't take orders from black clad maniacs. Her even going on to say, you don't pose much of a threat to me, at least not in my astral form. So Venom then turns to Spider-Man saying, do you know where this bossy lady lives? And of course he does, as even in the year 2099, the Sorcerer Supreme still lives in the Sanctum Sanctor. So these two now symbiote brothers decide to pay her a visit, as she then cuts her astral projection, looking back in her real body, saying this is bad, very bad, because these two now on the loose symbiotes are heading straight for her. For what reason? 
we don't know yet. But she then decides to use her actual form once more, flying out of the building. To go where? Well, she's going to go get in contact with someone very interesting, which we will get into a little later. But as she leaves, we see a winged man saying, finally, as he decides to break in and steal from the building. But moving back over to the streets of downtown Nova York, we see these two now venomized brothers swinging and talking. As rightfully so, the citizens down below screaming in terror as they point up and say, it's Venom, run! With Venom himself stopping to indulge in the fear, saying that's what you want, you want fear. The best fights are ones that don't even start because they're too afraid to take you on. With Spider-Man even agreeing, saying that sounds wonderful. As of course, slowly but surely, the symbiote starts to warp his mind, as it always does. But they then decide to move on to go towards the Sanctum Sanctor. Why? To confront and take care of the Sorcerer Supreme. Because as Venom says, we will show her what happens when you threaten us. And as they both jump in, breaking the giant window, they look in and see the winged man from earlier who broke in trying to steal stuff. And who was this? Well, this is the Vulture of the year 2099, who in this version is a murderer, a cannibalistic lunatic. But this revelation makes Spider-Man happy because he then goes on to say, Vulture at last, someone whose life I don't have to worry about. With the symbiote even being confused in his head saying, really, you mean it? Spider-Man says, yeah, he's the Vulture, a cannibalistic monster. I don't care what you do with him. As of course the symbiote that Spider-Man is wearing takes this as a green light to kill and maybe even consume the vulture. So the two now siblings jump into action. As the vulture tries to use his wings to fly up, they web him back down. But of course his wings are sharp, so he's able to rip the webs and throw some type of gas orb, slipping away and getting by with his life. As these two now symbiote creatures were not going to spare him. But of course they are now in the Sanctum Sanctor. So where's the Sorcerer Supreme? Well, we move over to see her sitting down, talking to someone, as she went to get help. And here we learn some pretty interesting things. Firstly, we see that her name is Genie, and as I said before, she is the Sorcerer, or Sorceress, Supreme. And why is she here? Well, as she says, she is not much for asking for help, but she believes she is going to need it. As you see, she shows a hologram of Spider-Man, saying this is how Spider-Man usually looks, and this is him now, showing a monstrous beast that he is now with the symbiote. Genie then goes on to say, I'm not sure, but I can tell you this. He's the most dangerous man in Nova York, which in and of itself, that is a very bold claim, especially to the person she is talking to. As we pan out and see it's literally Dr. Doom, the Doom of 2099, as he folds his hands and says, well then, it seems you have come to the right place. Because of course, where does a Sorcerer Supreme go when they need help? Well, they go to someone like Dr. Doom, who we will see help the Sorceress to hunt down fight, and ideally, revert and turn Spider-Man back into the hero he is. But for now, this issue ends, as does this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed this story, and subscribe if you're new and enjoy this type of content, or thought it was enjoyable. As always, this is the Hero Informer, and thank you for watching.